One of these young ladies has just survived an experiment in living called Project No Dough. What is your name, please? My name is Ann Foley. My name is Ann Foley. My name is Ann Foley. Only one of these young ladies is the real Ann Foley. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening Bob. Dear, dear, good friend, panel. We're brought to you tonight by Dristan Nasal Mist, the decongestant nasal spray for relief in seconds from sinus congestion and head colds distress. Now, panel, open up that envelope, if you will, please, and follow along as I read. I, Ann Foley, have just completed a month living exclusively on one credit card. Some of the things I was able to charge amazed me. They included stamps, a wig, a rented bicycle, a stuffed alligator, tickets to a baseball game, and even the services of a dentist. Of course, I moved out of my apartment where I had to pay the rent by check and moved into a motel which would honor my credit card. Some of my biggest headaches were caused by the fact that I was unable to use parking meters or pay telephones. Although I started out with an emergency nest egg of 50 cents, I never spent a penny of it. The whole experiment was called Project No Dough. Signed, Ann Foley. <laughs> Finally, these three young ladies all claim to be Ann Foley. We'll start the questioning with uh, Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, uh, Miss Foley, number two, uh, did you uh, have... Uh, your teeth drilled on the diner's club card, or...? Uh... <laughs> no, it wasn't the diner's club card. It was my FNB card, and I did have a tooth removed. FNB is what? That's the Florida National Bank. However, it's Florida First National Bank. Ah, number one, did yours take place in Florida, too? No, it did not. Whereabouts? Houston, Texas. Number three, where? Took place in San Francisco. Uh, number uh, two, uh, <laughs> what was the best thing you got from your credit card? Well, the best thing that I, I got from my credit card was my wig. Oh, yeah, you're not wearing it now, are you, dear? Only my hairdresser knows. Ah! <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number one, what, did your, where did your, what is your credit card called? My card is Presto Charge. Uh, and this, did this include any kind of transportation? No. How it's... did you get from place to place to get from an alligator to a stamp to a wig to a bicycle? By a rented car. Oh, you did have transportation then? Yes. Ah, number three, what have you done with the alligator? Did you sell it? No, I love it. It's on my dresser. <laughs> oh, it's a small it's one. It's stuck. Uh-huh. Uh, number three, are you wearing your wig? I will never tell. <laughs> number one, what is the best thing you got out of this? A lot of travel and a lot of knowledge. Number two, why did you do it? Well, I was out of work and I was just looking in the ads for a job and it appeared to be... Uh, the... Tom Poston. <laughs> Uh, uh, number three, what was the purpose of your doing this project? Well, uh, it was to demonstrate the versatility of the Bank AmeriCard and also to um, see if there were any small flaws in it where it could be improved. Uh, did you, were you able, number two, were you able by chance to draw cash against your credit card? Well, you can. However, during the experiment, this was not allowed. Oh, I see. It was, that was part of the conditions of the experiment. Uh, number one, you say you were in Houston, uh, Texas. Is that where the... Where did the uh, stuffed alligator come from when you were in your... The stuffed alligator came from Galveston. No, no, I mean, where did you buy... Peggy Cat. It sounds like the greatest job in the world. Yeah. Number three, what time did you start out using the credit card? What time? Uh-huh. Well, uh, I was working for Manpower during the first two weeks, and I guess I began about... 8.30 in the morning. Thank you. Number two, was there a curfew when you had to stop using your credit card? No, if everything stayed open 24 hours, you could use it. 
Gee, listen, um, number mm -hmm. one, what did you do for little tips, like, uh, you know, tips to attendants and things? You can't give her a credit card. Well, you had to eat at a restaurant that took the card, and then you just kind of signed it in on the card. Thank you. Number three, could you bring a date? I did, uh, a couple of times. She must have been the most popular girl in wherever you came from. <laughs> Number two, could you buy magazines on the credit card? Uh, you could, but it was a little bit more difficult. Uh, number three, how would... Oh. That's all the time you have. It's time for you now to mark your ballot. So you've gained a lot of information, a lot of experience, so mark your cards, if you will, please, at once, without change and without any consultation, of course, at all. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I couldn't uh, tell from what the girls said. They all seemed to know how to live on no money at all, so I just had a guess that it was number three. Peggy Cass. Well, I voted for number three because manpower is a temporary place where you work, and so you're sort of out of work when you work for them, so therefore should be looking for another job. If you get it. I voted for number three because uh, <laughs> Bank America is a very large outfit, and I imagine that uh, some of these smaller credit card outfits might be not too anxious to lay out all that cash. Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number three because I believe she, <laughs> she worked for the Bank of America, and also I think, if you don't mind my saying so, that you are wearing a wig. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Unanimous. For number three, all the way down the line, we'll find out whether they hit the truth or hit the other side of the ledger on this one. As we learn now, which one of these young ladies, in truth, is Ann Foley? Will the real Ann Foley please stand up? Oh, oh you're too smart. They get off on a tee like this, and they really cover themselves with glory, that panel. Or other times, when they go just the other way, just as violently, may I say. Incidentally, may I repeat for the record that Ann Foley did live for one month on the Bank America card issued by the Bank of America in California. Number one, what is your real name, and what do you really do? My name is Charlotte Denae, and I'm the director for the Barry Farber Show on WOR Radio here in New York. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Judy Ross and I'm a registered nurse on duty aboard New York to Miami run with Seaboard Airline Railroad. Ooh. Well, we thank you and in checking the score we find there were no incorrect votes, but in that case still $150 comes your way. And I do thank you very much for gracing our show tonight. Hope you enjoyed it as well. On your way out, of course, you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Tristan. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Leo Mark Anthony. My name is Leo Mark Anthony. My name is Leo Mark Anthony. Follow along once again, panel, if you will. I, Leo Mark Anthony, am referred to as the Portable Professor. As Associate Professor of Mining at the University of Alaska, I hold classes not only in schoolrooms, but also in huts, log cabins, or outdoors along rivers and streams from Ketchikan to Point Barrow. I teach mineral prospecting. My students are Eskimos, housewives, bush pilots, and even sourdoughs and experienced miners. The purpose of the course is to encourage the discovery of more of Alaska's vast untapped mineral wealth, which includes many of the minerals on Uncle Sam's most wanted list. Signed, Leo Mark Anthony. <laughs> my friends, these gentlemen all have claimed to be Leo Mark Anthony, one and the same. We'll start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Um, number one, where did you graduate from? The University of Alaska. Oh, where is that? In Fairbanks. Thank you. Uh, number two, what is Sitka famous for? Sitka was the old capital of Alaska under the Russian occupation of Alaska. 
thank you. Number three, what is the mineral most needed that uh, Alaska has the most of? Most needed? That yes, it says here in the affidavit that the minerals... Most wanted. Most oh, wanted. there's some 30-some-odd minerals in Alaska. What is tops on the list? That's hard to say what's tops, but you can start from uh, beryllium, which is used in the, uh, a new discovery just made out there. Thank you. Number one, what do you teach housewives? Well, we teach them how to help their husbands go out with them and pan, discover the... Thank you. Number two, what is your smallest classroom? Oh, a small log cabin would be about the smallest one. And how many uh, pupils would it have? We uh, usually require a minimum of about 20 students. Thank you. Are you year-round, number three? Tom Poston. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, do you uh, give any formal classes, any formal uh, uh, classes in, in the classroom with paperwork and so forth? No, there's, uh, well, the only paperwork is the home study work they do. Most of it is... Uh, field work on weekends and recitation during the week. Do you require that many students that number two said uh, 20 students to a classroom? Yes, it is, 20 students. Is that so? Uh, number three, uh, you started to name uh, some of the most wanted minerals. Go ahead, what were some other ones besides beryllium, I think you said? Oh, magnesium, any of the, uh, magnesium, beryllium, of course, uh, gold if they would get the price up, but uh, uh. platinum. Number two, so, how is, what's the most popular method of panning gold in, uh, in your, what, that you know about? We usually use a two-pan system where we use one for a screen and the other, the other for uh, the fines in panning. Peggy Cat. Thank you. Number one, what's Ketchikan? Hmm. Ketchikan is a city in the southern part of the peninsula. Of the, that old, the Alaska mm -hmm. Peninsula? Uh, no, down in the corner part of Alaska. Right? Well, thank you. Nearest point to the state. Number three, is tungsten a mineral? Yes. Number two, is tungsten grown in Alaska? Tungsten is an element. It's not grown in Alaska. Oh, no. <laughs> Number three, how far are the Aleutians from Russia? Well, the Aleutians go within, uh, oh, 500 miles of Russia. Now, that's not the closest point. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, I don't know what is the closest Diomedes. point. Diomedes. What? Diomedes Island. That's only two and a half miles. Thank you. Number two, are you portable in the winter, too? That's when I'm portable. <laughs> well, number one, how can you be portable with all that snow? I mean, how, where do you, how do you get through the snow to get to the minerals? Well, we use, oh, we go through the ice. We cut holes in the ice, and we use dipping process oh. to take the minerals out the bottom. Thank you. Arson B. Number one, uh, speaking of holes in the ice, uh, how do the fishermen catch uh, fish up there sort of holes in the ice? Well, very much the same as we do. Uh, uh, All right, how I'm do we do the it? Natives. <laughs> what? <laughs> the natives do it the same way we do up there. They do it with spears. Oh, really? Uh, number, uh, number one, uh, I'm number three, I'm sorry. Uh, where is Atu? Atu is out on the chain. It's one of the islands out on the chain, way out. Right number, at the number two, where is Adak? Uh, Adak is on uh, Adak Island. Uh, all right. Uh, number two, again, there, there's a famous Eskimo lady newspaper reporter. Do you know what town she's from? No, I don't. Number three, have you heard of her? Number three. Number three? No. Number one, have you heard of that lady? No, I haven't. All right. Uh, have you ever eaten raw fish, number one, or what do you <laughs> eat up there? Have you? Yes, I have. How is it? Pretty good? It's not too bad. All right. <laughs> number three. That's all the time we have. Time for you now to cut your own holes in the ice and mark your balance, if you will. Mark them at one. No yeah, conversation and no consultation. Just simply vote. Now, for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Swiftly and accurately. We trust. Let's see what we do this time. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, uh, I, it may have been a ploy, but I thought when number two corrected number one and said uh, tungsten's an element or something, and... Uh, I voted for number two, as you can see here by my card. <laughs> Thank you, Cash. I was going to vote for number three because he said he wanted, about the gold, he was mad it wasn't more expensive, but, you know, I voted for number one because he seems to have an accent that they have up there in Alaska. <laughs> have you been there? No. Orson B. <laughs> number three looks exactly like a professor, and I was completely for him, but I voted for number two because of uh, what he said about the tungsten there. I don't even, I thought tungsten was something you got at the stage delicatessen in a sandwich. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number three. 
Um, I thought he was a little evasive about all those elements and those minerals, but I, maybe he thought we should go to school and learn about it ourselves. And when he said that Atu was on that chain, it sounded very familiar, as though he knew that chain terribly well. <laughs> Well, he's certainly gone the other way this time. He split it up high, wide, and handsome. There's one for number one, two for number two, and one for number three. Okay, let's go with that and find out how it fits. As we learn now, which one of these three gentlemen is, in truth, Leo Mark Anthony? Will the real Leo Mark Anthony please stand up? Oh. Ah! <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much. What does seem to be the most wanted uh, mineral up there? I believe Uncle Sam's after gold now. More is than it? anything else in Alaska has all Because of all the gold that's gone out of our reserve, I suppose. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My real name is Herbert Stoning, and I'm a pilot for Seaboard World Airlines. We're scheduled freight line to Europe. Ah. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Tom Wheeler. I'm an Army Lieutenant Colonel at the Defense Information School. Well, gentlemen, you did a lot better than the girls did in the first round. You got yourself uh, two incorrect votes, and that's twice $250 for a total of $500. Maybe you might ask the girls out for a soda or something after this show. Make them feel better. And, uh, of course, on your way out, you'll also receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Tristan. And we thank you very much for being with us tonight. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> well, the panel will be back at it again in just a moment, right after this film. Third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Howard Pyle. My name is Howard Pyle. My name is Howard Pyle. Follow along once again, panel, if you will. I, Howard Pyle, am president of the National Safety Council, an organization whose purpose is to reduce accidental injury and death to people at work, at home, and especially on the road. Later this evening, the Council will join with the CBS network in presenting a television first, a program in which some 30 million people will take a driving test simultaneously right in their own homes. Specially prepared films will put each viewer in the driver's seat and allow him to compare his reactions to emergencies and his driving skills with those of a panel of typical motorists. The program will dramatize defensive driving, a technique which could save many of the 600 to 700 lives which the council estimates could be lost in traffic accidents over the coming Memorial Day weekend. Signed, Howard Pyle. <laughs> this time, panel, we bring you three gentlemen, all claiming to be Howard Pyle. We'll start this one, if we may, with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, but, gee, this is a good program for me because I just got a new car. <laughs> and, oh, my. Well, number two, do you believe in seat belts in the back seat as well as the front seat? Yes, I do. Thank you. Number three, when you're driving with animals in the car, like dogs, what can you do to secure them so that they don't go flying around? It is a policy of our uh, council not to recommend animals in the car. Not to recommend? Well, you can't leave them home. I'm... No, but you can put them in a proper car to carry them to your destination. Oh, number one, like putting them in dog boxes, you mean? Something That's like correct. That. I see. Uh, number two, what do you do when you skid? <laughs> I just learned. You've made a mistake if you do. Normally, you apply the brakes improperly, and this causes the skid, and you should release the brakes and try to right the car. Release the brakes and try to right the car? Number three, do you agree with that? Well, what you usually do is you find that the man who applies the brakes has broken a rule. Well, I'm number one. Orson B. Yes, number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number one. Uh, I saw, I happened to see the preview, the coming attraction, last Monday night on the thing, and you had cars that looked like lucky teeter time. They were whamming into each other. How did you do that? Were those real fellas inside that? 
We broke up 25 automobiles. Just to make this one? In order to make this spectacular. Gee, that's better than Ben Hur. They just had a couple of horses and... Uh, <laughs> number three, uh, there is a famous system. Uh, well, I, there was a, I saw a film put out by Bell Telephone. Uh, there's a system of safe driving. Do you know the name of the man that invented it, by chance? I do not, sir. Number two to you? No. Number one to you? Smith system. All right, number uh, two, uh, there was a picture with, with David Wayne in it, uh, all in color, but uh, I'll tell you the truth, I saw this because I got too many points on my driver's license. I had to go down. <laughs> <laughs> I really learned something out of it. You had to see it? Yeah. Kitty, Carla. Uh, number one, there's an English system that they use for truck drivers and so forth, which is, I think, performed on a skid pan. Do you know about this? No, I don't. Do you know about it, number two? I don't know the details. Uh, number three, can you tell me where most accidents occur? You apparently are interested in the home as well as uh, the Yes, road. we're interested not only in the home, but also in industry. But still, the great majority of accidents occur from automobiles. Not in the home? Not in the home, no. There will be about 25,000 deaths from the home accidents. And uh, the automobile is about 48,000 industries. Thank you. Number one, you seem to agree with number three when you said that you, if you applied the brakes, you've made a mistake already. What have you done wrong? Overdriving the environment in which you're operating, it may be on ice or snow or Thank you, and you shouldn't apply the brakes? Well, very cautiously, Number otherwise one. you have a locked wheel. Thank you. Number one, have you ever had an accident? Yes. You have? And you're president of the National Safety <laughs> Council? <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Hey. <laughs> Dom Bolton. Number three, uh, just to go back for a second, are you familiar with the system? Smith system, which number one spoke of? And no, sir. We're, we're, we have what we call the driver improvement system, and I must say that we've exerted all our efforts in that behalf. You don't know the Smith system? That number no, one. sir. That's a competitive or situation. I know nothing about it. Number two, uh, where did you get your automobiles for all of these tests and things that you've demonstrated on television? They come from the various manufacturers. We gave no uh, special attention to any particular manufacturer. Practically all of the manufacturers were represented. Thank you. Number one, uh, you're interested in safety generally, and speaking of automobiles, do you have anything to do with uh, putting uh, 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 smoke uh, mufflers on, on exhaust pipes and things? Do you know that? Uh... Well, this is a health problem. It's essentially the interest of the United States Public Health Service. And not in your department, you don't think? Well... And that's all the time we have. That's my department. I ask you now to mark your ballots, if you will. That's your department. Mark them at once, without change. And without any consultation, vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots are marked very quickly, I see. All right, Tom, for whom? I just voted for number three because I never heard of that Smith system. He really put me off with that because I wanted to go for number one because he knew about it. But number three says it, I don't know. Peggy Cat. Well, you really can't trust Orson. But um, <laughs> I think that that stuff about the Smith system got me. And besides, I thought you were supposed to follow through in the direction of which you were skidding. Well, that's true. Hmm. That's right. Well, I think it was the Smith system. All I can remember was that it was the something system. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, I didn't say it. He said it. <laughs> but I don't vote for it because I think it was the Smith. I, rem I learned some things out of the film. It was very good, as a matter of fact. Learn the the name of name. After all, something and Smith both begin with the letter S, so <laughs> actually. Kitty. I voted for number one for an emotional reason. Oh? I trust him, and I'm glad he's the president of the uh. National <laughs> Safety Council. <laughs> There we have it with the votes all in and the reasons given, sound or not, as the case may be. We'll find out now which one of these three gentlemen, in truth, is Howard Pyle. Will the real Howard Pyle please stand up? Very strong and very hard. Uh, number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Doyle Connor. I'm Commissioner of Agriculture for the state of Florida. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Brooks Hoffman and I'm a physician from Greenwich, Connecticut. <laughs> In checking the score, we find that there was one incorrect vote, and that's worth $250 to you gentlemen, and our sincere thanks, and our hopes also that you had as good a time as you gave to us. On your way out, of course, you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Tristan, 
thank you again. Good night, and God bless you. Thank you for the pleasure of this evening panel. Thank good night to you. Good night, good night to you, bud. Good night, Patricia. And we'll see you, of course, next week at the same time, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. But in the meantime, don't forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for the fun as Sam Levinson challenges Steve's panel with a fourth grade intelligence test on I've Got a Secret, next on CBS. To Tell the Truth has been brought to you by Anison, a headache tablet to relieve pain, to relax tension, calm nerves. Anison. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program was pre-recorded.